In essence, gears change the speed and direction of the movement within a gear system. In this case, we're taking the turning motion and power from this part of our machine and we're transferring it to the rear tire, another part of our machine. Now this is a good example with a bicycle in your classroom to introduce gears. It's kind of exciting to see a bicycle upside down in one's classroom here. And have your students walk around the bike and take a look at the gear system and ask them what happens when you turn the pedals. What other parts of the bicycle are in motion? They can draw this and note this, record this within their journal. You want to ask them where are the gears on the bike and what do they look like? You can brainstorm what it is that gears do and how they work. Have your students walk around and note how many gears there are and ask them why the gears are different sizes. What's that going to do within the gear system and in this case when riding a bike. So now the next activity with them is to take a piece of chalk and put a mark on your rear tire. In this case I have it right here and set it at a reference point. I'm going to use the frame. I'm going to do the same with our pedals. Now I'm going to set the bike on its lowest gear ratio and I'm going to have a volunteer come and turn the pedals and the rest of the class can count how many times the rear tire goes around while watching that chalk mark. You'll notice at the lowest level on this bike it's a one to one ratio. So one turn for the pedals equals one turn of the rear tire. Why is that? What gears are being turned here? What are the size of those gears? Now, you also want to try this for the highest gear on the bike and then you'll see what gears the highest uh, ratio sits on. You want to make note of that and count how many times the rear tire moves around and probably be about three or four times. So what gear would you want to be in if you were climbing a really steep hill with your bicycle? Or what gear would you want to be in if you wanted to go really quickly based on the information that we know? What you're likely to notice with your students is that in the lowest gear selection, the bike is going to pick the small gear up the front and the large gear at the back. And they're the, roughly the same size. We see that when we turn the front pedal, the rear tire turns at the same rate. And that's because they're the same size. We have a one-to-one -one relationship. Now in the highest gear, it's going to select the largest gear at the front and the smallest gear at the back and we see the difference in size of those gears lends to the tire in the back turning quite a few more times than the pedals here at the front. So have your students count how many teeth are in the small gear at the back and the large gear at the front and see if there's a similar relationship between the amount of spins in the rear tire versus the pedals. Now we have little mechanical advantage here when we're in a high gear but we have a higher rate of speed. Similarly uh, low speed in a lower gear but a greater mechanical advantage. We've just taken a look at a bicycle and how gears help it in its functioning and now it's time to really get hands on with gears so that we understand how they really work. So ask your students what objects in their surroundings function with the help of gears other than a bicycle. They might come up with items that they're familiar with such as a watch, can opener, maybe a guitar, a wrench. These are all great items that you want to keep track of as the unit progresses. Now if you have access to a commercially created gear system, they're really easy to put together and to take apart and they're not time consuming to work with, which is really a plus in the classroom. Now, if you don't have access to that, you can find individual gears at a dollar store or at a similar outlet that you can pin to some cardboard and create some really creative systems in this format. Now if that's also not an option, you can create some gears at a poster board and some pins and cardboard as well. I'd advise you to print out some templates, glue them directly on the poster board, cut them out and raise the teeth up so that they mesh appropriately when you put them together. And once you have a system such as this here set up, have your students explore that in sort of an unstructured way. And then you can ask those key questions about the relationship in size, the amount of teeth. Uh, you might want to mark one tooth on each gear so that they can see how many times they go around and the relationship between them. The idea is essentially that gears transfer force from one place to another. These are questions that you want to focus in on those ideas that they change the direction uh, of a force. They also change the speed of a force and they increase that turning force. So you want to introduce the idea of torque and clockwise versus counterclockwise motion and similar ideas such as this. Now if you have a commercially set up gear system, they often come up with different plans so you can challenge your students 
as a culminating activity to put other things together and to construct maybe with the use of an axle, a watch system to turn an hour hand and a minute hand. They're quite fun and creative. So have fun with gears. Hopefully the activities and demonstrations contained within this video will help you to communicate that both pulley and gear systems transfer motion from one place to another, transform one kind of motion into another, change the direction and speed of an object's motion, as well as change the amount of force required to move an object. Now these devices are generally used to make our everyday lives easier and when combined with the spirit of inquiry can be kind of fun to explore with your students as well.